The final building block is actually a superposition of um, a source and a sink. So let's, but we're going to call it a building block because we're going to do something special um, with the source and the sink. Building block number four. We're going to call this a doublet. Okay. Now, remember the sink and um, source slash sink was given by phi um, is equal to k or m over 2 pi log r. We're going to call this k log r. And psi was given by m over 2 pi theta. Let's call this k theta. Okay. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to place uh, a source in a sink. Now, assume the value of k is a positive quantity so that we can do a sink as well. So, at point minus a, I want to put a, um, a source. And at point A, I want to put a sink. So over here, we're going to put a source. And over here, we're going to put a sink. So therefore, C over here is minus K um, theta 1 with respect to point A. And um, C over here is K. Sorry. So this is minus K theta 1 and K theta Two. Now, what are theta one and theta two? If you um, remember my um, uh, my previous um, uh, videos, if you look at my previous videos, they're just the so at any point p or theta, um, theta one is the angle made by um, this by the uh, by the source and um, the line directly to P, and this would be theta 2, and this line through the origin is theta for the coordinates, okay? Okay, so in this case, um, C would be, so for the source, C is K theta 1, and that's equal to K, K is a positive quantity here, inverse tan y over x um, plus a. If you remember the previous uh, videos, it, we had an x minus a, and you know a in this case is negative a, so we get x plus a. And for the sink, we have a c equal minus k theta 2, and that's equal to minus k inverse tan so y minus b, b is 0, we get a b, and then x minus a. Now the superposition, source plus sink, is going to give us c equal to c1 plus c2, and that's equal to k into theta1 minus theta2. Agreed? So therefore... C over K is equal to theta 1 minus theta 2. Here's what we're going to do next. Um, we're going to take the tangent on both sides. So we're going to do tan C over K. Um, that's equal to the tangent of theta 1 minus theta 2. And that's equal to tangent theta 1 minus the tangent of the difference um, is difference of the tangents over 1 plus tan theta 1, tan theta 2. Okay. Now we can expand. Um, um, so if theta 1 is arc tan um, um, y over x plus a, etc. So what this does, what this does is the following: we get minus y over x plus a minus y over x minus a over 1 plus y over x plus a 
times y over x minus a, and that gives us minus 2ay over x squared plus y squared minus a squared. And finally, if c, so the reason we did all this is I want to express this um, in terms of the absolute coordinates x and y, or r and theta, okay? So then c is simply then minus k inverse tan okay, 2ay over x squared plus y squared minus a squared, and that's equal to minus k tan arc tan of 2 a r sine theta over r squared minus a squared. Okay, that's a very nice expression for C. We haven't done anything special here except we added a source and a sink. Um, we superimposed them. Now we're going to ask ourselves the following question. So let me first write this back here. C is minus k inverse tan of 2 a r sine theta over r squared minus a squared. Now, what happens as a becomes um, infinitely small, as a approaches zero? In other words, sink approaches the source, and they both approach the origin, okay? So we're bringing the sink and the source um, to the same point. So for small angles, what you will have, remember the identity, the arc tan epsilon is approximately equal epsilon as epsilon goes to zero, okay? And so as A approaches zero, this entire angle, we're going to assume that it also approaches zero, or it will approach zero because it's going to go at a higher rate than the other ones. And so we get minus the other terms in here, minus K times 2AR sine theta over R squared minus A squared. Um, <clears throat> now, obviously, um, if A goes to zero, then this whole, we're not going to have any flow because the source and the sink are going to cancel each other out. Except, except if we assume the following. What if, what if, what if, as A approaches zero, K approaches infinity. And remember, k was m over 2 pi. So in other words, the source emits an infinite amount of um, mass, and the sink absorbs an infinite amount of mass, but in a way such that ka is equal to q remains to be a constant. So what happens in that case, ka combine, and they give us a, a q, um, quantity or 2ka. So we call, we're going to call this minus q r sine theta over r squared minus a squared. So over here we said, so look at this analysis over here, q, so 2ka is q. And now as a approaches zero, r over r squared minus a squared becomes 1 over r, so you get q sine theta over, or minus q sine theta over r, which is a non-zero flow. This is pretty cool, and this is called a doublet. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the streamlines for the doublet, they kind of look um, a little bit interesting. We'll, we'll plot them, um, uh, we'll plot them at, at some point. However, the idea here is that this doublet is going to actually help us um, do the flow over a cylinder because it's just like a concentrated um, um, a mass of f fluid and that's kind of, so it's kind of the, they look like this a streamline so when we add uniform flow this is going to cluster together and give us what looks like a cylinder.